Welcome to Media Dogs. George, Pat. I'm George. Um, Lou, or Pat said, or Lou, oh, crikey. Yeah. Pat, uh, Lou said that he was going to let me do the intro, and already he's interrupted me, so. How, how would that change? change? You think that was going to change in 25 years? I didn't. I didn't. But <laughs> it's funny. Um, I met up with you in 2013 in L.A. Right. And on, after after as we were leaving the place uh i don't know one of us said i wish there was a way we could you know still do the show because lou's in la now it has been for how many years 20 21 years and you're sorry 21 years. um and i thought well we could do a podcast i guess but i didn't really want to do a podcast and strangely enough you everybody's looking for silver linings uh to this um coronavirus pandemic that we're uh under right now and i guess this would be one silver lining we have not been together for a long long time at least 20 years True. And, yeah it's um, crazy so uh lou Pat, <laughs> I, I can't. the story of a bunch of weirdos yeah <laughs> Wait, um, yeah. anyway we're back we're back yay yay oh, very there. excited to be back so uh we we thought that we would we'll probably not talk much about uh, what we intend to talk about, but we thought that we would talk about um, streaming and binging during the pandemic. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, people keep going past my window, and I'm like, uh huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> Squirrel. Squirrel. Name the movie. Up. Uh, 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 you guys are. Hey, there we go. We should stop now. Yeah. That's as good as it's gonna get. I liked it. Up. Oh yeah! Movie. Are you yeah. kidding me? That first ten minutes of that movie, that alone, is uh, that and Squirrel, you know, Squirrel. all the time. That's a great movie. It's yeah. in Webster's now. Squirrel. It was, it was gorgeous in 3D as well. Oh, fancy! Oh. You yeah, saw it, I saw it in 3D on the IMAX screen. It was like dizzying. Wow! So here's it's the cool. Really thing. well done. The, yeah. best, the best thing is that. All three of us have seen the movie too. Yeah. Yes. That's well, actually, I was going to say. I mean, if we're talking pandemic stuff, then we we were talking about Wally -E the other day. That's another one that, uh, especially now, we were talking about. We're turning into those that society, right? Where we're all just going to be flab and no bones. But let's what let me you, bring it down right now. <laughs> what would you guys rate as your top Pixar films? Hey. Top three Pixar films, go. Top three? Um, Toy Story 2. Good pick. Wally. -E. And. Well, that's hard without writing it down. Let's say I know for sure Toy Story 2 and Wally. -E. I wish I could do like. The first three Toy Stories is just one, because otherwise I'd go to Toy Story three. But I think either Nemo or uh, uh, I have a soft spot for Monsters Inc. 
Okay. Yeah, that is a good one. I'll have I'd go. Speak. I'd go Incredibles, Toy Story three, and probably Wally. I um. I like the one where the little lamp hops around. <laughs> yeah. I watched Toy Story 4 last night and was really underwhelmed. Was that the first time you saw it? Yeah. I didn't go see it in the theater. I, 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 that's when I, that was one that I just, I, you know, I've been teaching Toy Story 3 for a while as the final film in my film society class. And it was, it's such, it's so good. And I was like, to make another one just seemed completely unnecessary. Well, it, it did, but, uh, and I agree, like Toy Story 3 is so good. I just, there are things in 2 that I love. Uh, right. so I go back and forth, but, but I will say that I didn't dislike 4 when I saw it, but I yeah. definitely liked it better the second time I saw it. It's, it's not bad, it's just... Unnecessary. Un underwhelming, you know, just yeah. kind of, oh, okay. You know. But still, there's a good binge. There's the first binge, the four Toy Story movies. There you go. That'd be good. Yeah, I didn't see it. Yeah. Got it. Are you not a Pixar? Have we never talked about that? I guess not, right? I've been no. we've been gone since the, the movie started pretty much, right? I don't know. You want me to look it up? That's this is a different thing we can do is we can actually look this yeah, stuff up. No, I think Toy Story, the first Toy Story was like '96, so that's right at the edge of when we stopped doing this. Right. So Pat and I must have been doing them in '97, maybe '98. Well, we did the the one that you just posted was uh, the best of '96, and I was on that one. That maybe was my last one. Which would have been in 97, right? Yeah. You guys talk. I'm looking it up. How about, the, how about your pick for the worst Pixar film? Your least um, favorite. Oh, uh, shoot. What's, oh, I guess, gosh, I hate to say it, but I probably, the of the Pixar ones, I mean, like, you know, the Disney ones that, uh, what was it? The last dinosaur that was lame. How was that? I didn't see it. It looked beautiful. Like you wouldn't believe how beautiful it looked, and it was just not very good uh, story-wise. But I guess the least of them for me has been. Well, you know what? I shouldn't say that. I I skipped um, the Cars sequels. Yeah, I heard the Cars sequels, and I didn't like Cars one. So when I when they came out with the sequel, I was like, bleh. You but know, I, was I wasn't like, a big fan of Brave, I guess. I hate to say it because that's supposed to be the, you know. I wanted to like that movie yeah. so much. And I love parts of it. I mean, the trailer, like, practically made me burst into tears. But the, yeah. it just it didn't quite work. It didn't. Uh, but it's I, still not a bad one. I, st I, I wouldn't put it as a bad one. Like No, Cars I just, what, what's, your, what's the least for you? Cars? Cars. Yeah, that makes sense. Um. How about non Pixar? Like the bet, like I love the uh, How to Train Your Dragon movies. Uh, I've only seen the first one of that. And I liked the first one. Yeah, uh, I, I thought the first one was good. Um, the first and the third are the best. The second one's good, but it's the third. The third one's almost as good as the first. I just uh, I always say I always talk about the first one uh, because that was. Uh, um, that came out sl shortly after Avatar, and I I'm always like, How to Train Your Dragon is what Avatar, uh, you know, tried to be, because I didn't like Avatar, and uh, I just but, don't know how I feel about Avatar. I'd have to watch that again. I remember just being like, Well, that was cool, but I didn't well, like nothing. Really, didn't do anything for me. Well, no, the story was terrible. The story was Fern Gully, which is Fern Gully, like, exactly. It's Fern Gully, a mediocre, uh, you know, animated movie. But the uh, but How to Train Your Dragon had all those thrills of the three D and stuff, and still had a beautiful, you know, fun story. It, it, it didn't it didn't wow me until I got to the end, and I, I don't want to do any spoilers, but they they do something at the end which I thought was pretty radical for for a, uh, an animated film aimed at kids. And I was really happy about it. I don't want to ruin it, but if you see yeah. it, 
Yeah. No, no, I, I know what you're saying. Maybe that's what it left me with, but I, I loved How to Train Your Dragon. Yeah. Are you guys binging any TV series? Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. George, wait, chime in. I'm, I feel wait. Like I'm talking to him. Uh, no, no. What? Um, so Toy Story 2 was 99. Hmm. So Toy Story had been out before our last show. There you go. Who came out after? So I'm having fun um, choosing uh, virtual backgrounds for us. Nice. Oh, look at yeah, it's changing, ever changing. Um, yeah, you know, Pat, so much TV. It's just like you know, I've always said that I was raised by a pack of wild TV sets, right? Because I've just been <laughs> over the years so much. There's so much. It's, there it's, is it's so exciting. much, and and in the time that we've been apart, man, there have been in the last. You know, even in the last decade, but the last twenty years, there's been so much good TV, and yeah. Where and start? Uh, and I was saying earlier, that's what you know. My daughter seems to be in step with me, so I can show her anything that I feel like you know watching. So we've watched a ton of stuff uh, that that's all like like. So we're not watching it the second, but it's all binge worthy. I mean, I've shown her everything from. I think we started with Lost and ER and we're uh, Buffy and Angel, which are great. This is a great time to, to revisit those because they're still great. Um, uh, Twin Peaks, I got her into, which of course is my favorite. Even like season three is just brilliant to me. And uh, Justified is another great show. And then I recommend to people, uh, Breaking Bad, which is actually not one of my favorite shows. There's, a, I know how, why it's great, and I get that and everything. But the show that I love, even just like, I mean, it's team photo for me is Better Call Saul. I just, I heard that too. I haven't finished Breaking Bad yet, but uh, I heard Better Call Saul. A lot of people place it above Breaking Bad. I do absolutely, because here's what happens: is they take my two favorite characters, Mike and uh, Saul, from from uh, Breaking Bad, they put them into a show. They didn't know what they were gonna do with the show when they made it, and they created this great thing. You add in Michael McKean and some other characters in there, but the whole soul of that Better Call Saul is this actress, Ray Seahorn, who plays this character, Kim, who of course is never mentioned in Breaking Bad, just completely new to the mix, and she is she is absolutely, Brilliant. She is like in the Mount Rushmore for me with uh, with James Gandolfini and I don't know maybe Kyle McLaughlin and stuff. Just best performances ever by anybody on a TV show. Sure. Wait, those guys were in Mount Rushmore. Or they Rushmore? are my Mount. Oh, never mind. My Mount Rushmore. <laughs> I'm gonna cut that out. Okay. Bad joke. No, that's okay. Mount Rushmore would be. Um... No Rushmore. Rushmore. Yeah, I was thinking uh, uh, um, uh, uh, that would be Wes Anderson's remake of North Bar Northwest. <laughs> right, that would be there awesome. You go. Yes. Oh my gosh. Yeah. This is like a brain trust, the three of us. Yeah. <laughs> there, yeah, there's there's all this that, yeah. The, uh, do you guys listen to uh, another thing to pick up, especially for folks like us, if you haven't, is, and I know this is going to sound so absurd, but Gilbert Gottfried has a uh, podcast and it's really because, I mean, he loves this stuff. So it's makes sense for him to be there, but it's because of his partner, Frank Santo Padre, who uh, is the research guy. And he's the, he knows all the stuff like, you know, he'd be perfect in our conversation, but um, they talk to old character actor. They have such a great set of references for old movies and old, you know, I like God. stars and character actors and everything from the, you know, universal monster movies to every, you know, hammer movie you can think of and cool. just anything old and, and Gilbert, who's, you know, his comedies, his comedy turns out to be like the greatest mimic, like you've ever heard everybody from James Mason to, to John MacGyver. If you guys know, not, you know, Richard Dean Anderson, MacGyver, John MacGyver, if you know who that actor is. Uh, it's, just a, it's a cool podcast, and guys like us would, uh, I mean, I enjoy it. You guys would like it, too, I think. John MacGyver. Yep, yep, exactly. 
Sure. Except like except, except yeah. Gilbert's is really good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, let's get the old game back together. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, well, you know me. I'm into the, I love the English series. Yeah. We've been watching Breeders lately, which you can pick up on FX or, and you know what? I'm, I'm going to just put graphics up, you know, if we mention stuff where you can access it, because a lot of people have no idea where to access stuff. Sure. You know, um, there's so much out there, uh, but Breeders is good with, um, I can't think of the name, you know, Tim. Martin Freeman. Thank you. Yes, I was going to say Tim from The Office, because uh, that's how I know people. That's how I know actors, by their their characters. Their name. Tim from The Office and, you know, Dawn from The Office. So, um, and that's the UK office, not the, uh, not, uh, not Jim and Pam. So, uh, and it's about, it's about, parents basically and Mike you, you reminded me when you're talking about Michael McKeon uh he plays um Daisy Haggard's father oh that's cool yeah and it's funny because uh I'm not a parent but I I can just imagine just uh uh Martin Martin's character uh is always kind of losing it you can just see like his head about to explode he's about to bust a gasket in there yeah, no, no, I saw, we saw the first episode of it uh, just two days ago or something like that. Yeah. I just got, I just got Hulu, so now I've got all those FX shows. Uh, speaking of British shows, how about uh, the Ricky Gervais combo? Um, I, Afterlife, to me, is like one of the most perfect shows I've ever seen. But I tell people that they should watch Gervais's Derek first, just because... You get a sense of his uh, his uh, troupe of actors. Do you know what I mean? I mean, Derek's really good. Don't get me wrong. It's just that Afterlife to me took it to another level. But it, there is some kind of sweetness to seeing some of the same people in there. But oh, uh, and extras. Yeah, and extras. And, oh yeah, I like uh, extras. But uh, in Afterlife, uh, speaking of great, just cool things, you know, Penelope Wilton. Mrs. Crawley, there you go, is your reference from uh, Downton Abbey. It has these wonderful scenes with Gervais just on a park bench <laughs> and they just them talking. And it, it's so. This really is Afterlife? Fun. Afterlife, yeah. If you haven't seen it, Pat, it's like the all the women on the show are great. Each one's better than the other one. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and nobody talked about it when it came out, which is weird because, of course, with the Me Too movement. But maybe the best female characters and performances are happening on that show. And I'm, oh, I lost it. Okay, so as British the eldest, shows? what's that? You said you were talking about your British, your favorite British show. No, I as the eldest media dog, I'm just gonna say, you know, I'm at that age where you know. Oh, I forgot what I was just gonna say. Nice. Are you older? You're the you're the oldest. Are you the oldest? Oh, I must be. Yeah. So, really? uh, happy birthday, Lou, by the way. A couple Thank days you. ago. Yesterday. Oh, happy birthday. Yesterday. Thanks. By the time happy it airs, it'll be a couple of days oh, ago. Oh, yeah, a couple of days ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah, George, a couple of days ago. I was going to say something about uh, Afterlife. Nah, I don't know. I loved it, though. I loved it. Oh, I know what I was going to say. It wasn't about afterlife at all. It was just a broad statement. If you can afford, like, the extra, what, three bucks on Hulu, it's so worth it not to have the commercials. Oh, I yeah. Agree. I agree. I'm going through that now because I went cheap, and it's actually still free at the moment. But, yeah, everything is with commercials. and It didn't take me long. It's like, oh, I'm going crazy. It's, it's so worth it. Um, well, I find, I don't know about you guys, but I find that I'm watching uh, uh, Netflix less and less. So I'm almost like once, uh, once Afterlife, because the new season of Afterlife comes out at the end of this month, oh. I might move away from, I actually removed, I had Dish, I got rid of that. So I have no like broadcast. Yeah, I cut cable. I'm just doing streaming services. Although I went kind of crazy with the number of streaming services I kind of right. got, but. I would recommend a couple that 
don't show up a lot in people's discussions. Um, you know, I'm a big horror fan and Shudder. Oh yeah, yeah, that's it's good. About five bucks, it's really worth it. And um, I also really like the Criterion Channel. Oh, oh, that's cool. What was? Yeah, there's great stuff on there. Awesome the stuff. One, what was the one that had Criterion stuff before that? That was excellent. Right. Um, that was a combination of that and TMC, which I loved, and then it went under. But Criterion Channel still has a lot of stuff I want to see. Um, and uh, yeah, I would highly recommend Criterion. Have you ever seen videos of those people going into the Criterion closet and getting yeah. the whatever movies they want? All those are on there if you want to see them. Yeah. I'm jealous. But yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. Shudder, I, I'm, I actually should reach out to you, Pat. I need a list of horror films from you because I'm running out of stuff that I know off the top of my head to watch. There's so many good like independent horror films these days. Just nuts. And the number of great ones. Yeah. yeah. I just don't know which one to click on, but I'm dying for some good horror films. Yeah. Let Hello. me know. I'm just going to interject, interrupt, get that list to me and I'll put it on the screen. Perfect. Yeah. When I edit this. Um, so no hurry. Homework, homework for the teacher. Professor Ponder. Yeah. Oh, or as you used to call him, you used to call Pat Instructor Boy. Oh, did Instructor I? Boy. <laughs> you probably shouldn't have brought that up. Instructor Boy. I like that, actually. It's cool. Pat, Pat's Boy. responsible. I sound, like a, I sound like a horrible side, superhero sidekick. Yeah, <laughs> Instructor Boy. Professor Man and Instructor Boy. Pat Gonder by day, Instructor Boy by night. Yeah. There's that. That graphic, that meme graphic of uh, what you got, Professor Man, like slapping Instructor Boy and saying, <laughs> yeah, exactly. you know, whatever the meme is of the day. Yeah, like, no, yeah. stay the in your house. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we can drop that gum if you like, though. So that's <clears throat> I'm not gonna, but unless I do, you can do yeah. whatever you want. I can do whatever I want. The, well, this this Zoom will show up on uh, on Facebook in a couple days, and there'll be arrows pointing to me with the Chiron that says "doesn't know what he's talking about." Oh, no. <laughs> no, that's not true. <laughs> I never thought of that. People are gonna make memes out of us. They're gonna make me mince memes out of us. <laughs> okay. So before this, I don't even know. Is there? Has anybody been timing this? There's no timer or anything yeah um i just want to um i i reached out my to my friend uh who uh, works at cook library and i know this doesn't apply to all libraries but it'll apply to a lot of libraries um like ours in town in libertyville so libertyville gray's lake right you're still in gray's lake yes um la los angeles yeah can tell by the hat los angeles yeah. Um, she says that uh, Hoopla, they got Hoopla at our library, and they're they're working on getting. Uh, hold on, Canopy. And Canopy's great. It sounds great. It's um, yeah. Uh, uh, classic. If, uh, if anybody is a CLC student, um, um, there's tons of movies you can you can stream from our library on Canopy and a couple other streaming services. Yeah, but we don't we do not have Hoopla. But we do have Canopy and feature films for education and a couple others. Cool. What about if you're an alum? Like if I'm a CLC Maybe, alum? I don't know. Pro probably. Probably. Uh, I think if you have a uh, – uh, we're open to the community. So if you have a – you could. Um, we're a community college. So uh, I'm not going to – I don't want to say for sure, but I think anybody can go in and use the, 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 the college. So, yeah. For example, you can you can uh, stream Haxon, a like silent uh, European uh, horror film about the history of witchcraft, which is like <laughs> the weirdest movie you've ever seen. Cool. Uh, wow. Yeah, great stuff there. I don't remember from our experience, Pat. Were you into uh, David Lynch? Do you are you Twin Peaks? Oh yeah, uh, Twin Peaks was a really important thing for me. But and I have not watched the uh, Showtime. Um, new series, which I heard is fantastic. Yeah, no, I would, I'd swear by, you know, it's funny because let's talk, let's take a minute to talk about my obsession, Lynch, but I don't know, George, if we've talked much. I know, I know we were fans because I know we saw Fire Walk with me in the theater together, but um, 
We did? Yeah, we did. It was you. It, there were the only four people in the theater were you, me, Heather, and Jen. Okay. <laughs> four people in oh, that I'm theater. Thinking, what's the one with the close-up cigarettes with Sailor and Lula? That's the one I saw up in, Ma- uh, in Milwaukee. That's not um, fun. Oh, right, right. You know, a whole drive into that. Can I say I? I was like, man, nah, Firewalk with me. I don't know. At the time, I watched it before Series Three came out, and I was mm-hmm. like, it's so good. I, I actually, that's exactly what I was going to say. So, so when Lynch, no, no, the only thing Lynch said before Season Three came out is that you should watch Firewalk with me. Oh, uh, beforehand. And I'd watched it a couple of times and certainly liked it better as time went on. But I'm telling you, man, it, it, it's like I love like Firewalk with me went from being like what you said. That was my reaction to I think I actually like it better than Blue Velvet. It's, you know, and obviously Blue Velvet's the epitome of, of Lynch. But yeah. man, when you keep watching Firewalk with me, it just like grows on you. And it's like, I, I would never dismiss the first two seasons, especially the, I'm even a fan of stuff that Lynch hated about like season two and kind of dismissed himself. But there's stuff in there that I really like. But Fire Walk With Me is a different animal. And I, underst- I, I used to think they did the prequel because Kyle didn't want to do the movie. And so they had to switch gears. But I've come to learn that that's, that was Lynch's plan all the time. It's just that those scenes that Chris Isaac did, those were going to be Kyle. And because Kyle didn't want to do much in the movie, they split it between him and Chris Isaac. But anyways, but the movie's so good. And then when you watch season three, which again, yeah, I am a huge fan of season three. Um, it's, it goes hand in hand with that movie. It really was important to be fresh on Firewalk with me and then watch uh watch the movie and uh or i mean watch the tv the tv season but it's an 18 hour uh movie pat season mm-hmm. three is that's what i heard 18 part yeah, heard. movie yeah. and nothing about it is uh, it's perfect for stuck in your house right because you got nowhere to go so you should be more patient and just allow it to happen and let lynch do what he does and in a way it's a tribute to everything it's kind of like a tying a bow on all of his work, not just mm. Twin Peaks, but beautifully done. There's so many great things throughout. Um, there's probably, you know, every, there's this, uh, I'm not uh, giving anything away, but part eight, you know, is the one that can go up in a museum wall. And I understand that. And it's pretty amazing and, and kind of out there. Um, people probably debate whether they like part 17 or part 18 better. Um, part 17 is, is, really 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 good and part 18 is like the best hour of tv i've ever seen mm, i've heard yeah i heard amazing things about it yeah i gotta see what part was part eight, was part that eight. eight? so this is bomb? my my twin peaks cup <laughs> i am you dougie's cup. Bomb? and of course i had to buy it once it... oh yeah yeah i've got part, part eight the atomic bomb yeah oh, okay part eight's the atomic bomb. So yeah, Pat. That's for uh, from for Pat. That's your uh, that should be top of your list, as you said. Yeah, yeah, I gotta watch that. That sounds good. Get get Showtime for free for a week and then binge it. I mean, you know, it's funny because Lynch didn't. It was weird because sometimes he'd say he didn't want you to binge it, and other times he talked about the fact that it was an eighteen hour movie. He wanted it to be seen all at once. Hmm. Well, did you read the biography? I like, haven't yet. I have it. I actually got that was another one. I met Lynch at his uh, book signing. Wow, which was cool. You got to read That's it. Cool. It's it's basically it's the biography does. I can't remember who wrote it. If it was well, it's a there. woman. She was there actually. I can't remember okay. her name. So her. I thought it was. So she does her chapter and then right and then or I, no, I'm thinking of Lynch and then he writes. He responds to that chapter each chapter. Oh, I have to, I'll have to look at that. That's but Lynch, you know right? what? Actually, that actually reminds me, there's a documentary about Lynch, right? The, I think it's called The Art Life. Yeah. And it's amazing. Pat, I think that if you haven't seen that documentary on Lynch, I think that it's called The Art Life. You'll appreciate yeah. it uh, from your perspective because it's really done differently because the only, um, the only one that's really interviewed in it is David. 
right? So he's the only one, you know, talking to the documentarians. And it's very not, you know, there's not a lot of, you know, Q&A or anything. It just kind of shows him in his element. And oh, which again, comes in the hand when you play, when you see uh, Twin Peaks, you realize just how much of a painter he is, right? He's an artist. So we use that word for uh, filmmakers, right? They're, an, they're artists, they're auteurs, but Lynch really is truly a painter. And he painted a painting with season three of Twin Peaks and told you to go ahead and stand there in the museum and take a look and make up your own mind. So the name of that book is Room to Dream. Room to dream. Yeah, and and it is him. He he responds. That's uh, you know that's being the eldest media dog. I I'm like, did I remember that right? Sometimes I'm like, did that happen or did I dream it last night? So you know, life's like <laughs> life. My life is like a television series. But if you do get that Showtime, order up that Showtime. Call your local cable operator. Um, <laughs> remember, our director used to get so upset when I would do that. Yeah, it was the best. Why? It was, we were, you know, we were plugging it for the company. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Free PR. I don't know. Free advertising. Um, there's a Daisy Haggard um, series on Showtime right now. Uh, she gets out of prison. She's been in prison since she was 18. Um, it's pretty good. I can't. What's that one? Do you remember the title? I don't. It was, it was, you know how their titles are all these phrases, you know, in England? Okay, sure. Yeah. It was yeah. like, um, you know, just got out or something like that, but that's not what it was. I'll put it, I'll put it along the uh, got it. later. Hey, uh, speaking of remembering hanging out with you guys, I also remember, uh, I guess George was probably there too, but I remember specifically being with Pat at uh, seeing First Contact in the movie theater, the start oh, yeah. of First Contact. Have you watched Picard? You know yeah. You? I, I had very mixed feelings about the show. Um, I felt like the first half of the series, I was so on board. I, I loved it. And then I just felt like their ideas ran out of gas. Um, when you finally, I don't want to give anything away, but when you finally get to the big reveal, it felt uh, very cliche. Um, yeah. I, was, I was ultimately incredibly disappointed with the finale. Um, and, you know, all props to the actors and everything they did. There was some great acting there. Uh, but, and, you know, the script writer, I mean, that's Michael Chabon. You've got these great people working on it. But they just, I, I'm sorry, but for me personally, it just fails at the end. Uh, how did you, what do you guys think of it? Um, <clears throat> I don't know that I'm, uh, I guess, yeah, I'm, I'm there with you. I was just trying to think through that because ultimately I, I watched it with my son and, we talked a lot about but the stakes never seemed real, right? So it never seemed no. important enough to me no. what was going on. And, and so my mixed feelings came in that I, um, not to keep bringing up uh, uh, peak season three, but <clears throat> one of the, I'm very nostalgic. Like I love nostalgia. I want reunions and all that stuff. And Twin Peaks was not nostalgic at all, which is one of the strengths. So that cut to Picard where the things that I liked were the nostalgic things, right? There's an episode with Riker and Troy. That's the best episode. The best episode. Uh, having Jerry Ryan there, which I don't Did even you know. Come back? Was, that, was, or, that was really cool you, when they brought you back. Yep. Yeah. So that was, the, that was the best stuff for the show is the nostalgic stuff. And the other stuff didn't really mean much to me. So I, I'd even struggle to say whether I'd watch the – I know they're going to – I actually heard, I have a source. Uh, I think the common knowledge is that they're going to do a second season. I heard they're going to do two and three together, and then that's going to be it. Okay. But I'm not even sure. You, been, you were on Star Trek, right? I yeah. did an uh, episode of Voyager. That was, that was one of the great discussions. Like, I did this real quick. I did this. So I did this episode of Voyager, found out that one of the guys in my group in the scene was Paris Themen who played uh, Mike TV in Willy Wonka. So I always thought that that was funny. And he came up, his name came up, and I Googled him one time and discovered that uh, he's been going to uh, these conventions 
and he'll sign Willy Wonka stuff, but he also signs a picture from Voyager that I'm in. I'm actually more prominent. So people are getting signed copies of Mike TV, signing copies of, of an official Star Trek Voyager picture that I'm the main <laughs> There you go. That's cool. It's funny, but yeah, that was um, cool. You could do that. I wanted to, uh, um, there's yeah. a, um, I, I was thinking about which shows I would suggest to binge. Like you guys are saying, there's just, there's too many, there's too many to, to pick. But um, one that I would, a couple that I would suggest for pandemic viewing, just as a kind of uh, either expression or cure for how we feel, uh, one would be The Good Place. Oh, you know, it's funny. My son just asked me, because I watched it with my daughter, but not my son. And yesterday, he just asked me, should he watch The Good Place? But And talk about a, the, the only time that series slips is, is, is in the last season, right before the end. It, gets, it isn't quite as good. And yep. then they hit that ending, hammer, hit, nail. I mean, it just that, 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 that final episode is so good. Uh, so, I don't know how you felt about it. George, did you watch it? Is it like Lost where they're all dead, really? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I, no, I mean, like, when, I, I'll, I'll tell you this. When, when, when it hit, uh, I, don't want, I won't give anything away, but when I got to that final episode, and of course it was, it was all designed, the reason why it's so good to binge is that it's designed as one long, four season long story. There's no episodic <laughs> elements. It's, it's all one story. And when, they, when you realize what it's building to, when you get to that last episode and you realize the emotional gut punch of what they're going to do, uh, kill me. Well, the, the, I, I, one of the things I was saying is, uh, I, I'm, I'm not showing any disrespect to, to dancing, but at a certain point, I just wanted to see him do drama because he's really good at it. And I was like, why is he in a, another half hour show? And he ends up being so fantastic. Like I was never a big fan, but I am now. The I best thing he's ever done. And, yeah, and but even that said, and of course, Kristen Bell is always great, but the actors that play Cheedy and Jason and, uh, um, oh, and Janet good. are just re revelatory. I mean, they're so funny and so good. And, and yeah. I agree with you, Pat. Yeah, it's one long four-year arc and... And they nail it. They totally stick the landing, for sure. Does he play the bartender? I'm yeah, kidding. well, that's I, why. He does at one point. <laughs> yeah. okay. The exactly. good thing is, it, since Wonderful it takes place in the afterlife, they've got scenes with Coach, because, you know, it's, <laughs> it's interesting to have an, back. that actor on your show. Well, actually, I, And yeah. Woody's dad, apparently. So getting back to, I'm sorry, that was a horrible joke. <laughs> getting... Getting back to Pat's question, I couldn't get past the first episode. I just was like, why does everybody love this? And, and that's kind of a syndrome. Like if everybody's like, you've got to see this show. And then you, you see the, the first episode sometimes. It's like, yeah. You've got to make it to the, the, in fact, and I would suggest making sure you don't read anything about it. Don't even look at pictures from it. But you got to make it to the end of the first season. Yeah. Yeah. I loved it, but then just, when I hit the end of the first season, I was like, oh, you know. I was just, just enjoy like, it. Yeah, just enjoy it for what it is and don't, don't, because cause what you're, in your head, you're thinking, wow, how are you going to sustain this for more than two episodes, you know? Okay. So, right. So getting, uh, getting, uh, so I was watching, so <laughs> after I contacted you guys, I was excited about, we're going to do a show. Hey, kids, let's put on a show. And, I was like, I got to watch some of those old ones. I had captured some from the VHS. And so we talked a lot about Rob Roy and Braveheart. Yeah. <laughs> still, I still never seen either of those. And I probably will oh. never. Probably will I, never. I, I, I don't think you like you. Honestly, I don't think, I don't think those are must watches. Well, no. I, I, I think Braveheart is. I, don't, I never liked Rob Roy that much, but, but Braveheart for sure. So just I just thought that the ending of Braveheart was just a little too much cheese for me. Oh come on, bring the cheese, man! Bring it, it was like that's in the end. Um, I think I don't know. It's yeah. like eventually he does because it's twenty twenty. Um, Plus, man, if you watch Braveheart now, you will be astounded by the homophobia. Oh okay. oh yeah, I suppose so, right? Yeah yeah, it's like and, such yeah. it it has not aged well in terms of that, like at all. Mel Gibson. 
Yeah, hey, um, then there's the Mel Gibson problem, right? Yeah. <laughs> so wait, okay, wait, time out. Go so ahead. I had to write this down so I wouldn't forget it. So you're talking about Picard, and I feel the same. I'm very right on board with you guys about that. I got the CBS All Access. I paid a little extra to get the no commercials. And uh, right now, you can get a month free. Of course, that started the week, like, like a few days after I got the seven-day free. But that's yeah. okay, you know. Um, and, and, but you can get a month free, CBS All Access. Paid a little extra for the no commercials. And what I'm really liking is Discovery. The, yeah, I like Discovery. And so I'm about uh, 12 episodes right now into the first season. And I really like it a lot because it's so messy. Yeah. Can I say one thing they need to fix on Discovery? The Stop ship. making Michael cry. Michael. Oh. The main character. She needs to get through an episode where she doesn't like break down. Because I think there's some real sexism. I'm sorry I'm being like. No, no. Yeah. Easier, but there's some real sexism there where they like, can't just have her go through an episode where she's just. That where she doesn't have a moment where she doesn't cry, but I like Discovery. We, I, I so, watched. I got no. I like. I enjoyed that show. So to answer you, George, that's what I did. I waited till all ten episodes of Picard aired, and then I got the month free. I actually have already pre-canceled <laughs> CBS All Access. Yeah. But they're they're offering me a second month free, so maybe I'll uncancel and then watch Discovery. I'll have to do that. So I got to ask you then. So, okay, so you got it for Picard. I did the yeah. same thing. I waited till Picard was, because they yeah. do it one, one week at a time. Yeah, yeah. Of, and then, and, and then um, what was my question going to be? Um, oh, what else on CBS All Access is worth watching? I don't know. Nothing. It's terrible. And I lasted five minutes. I tell you, five, you're speaking of not giving, of giving up on The Good Place. I lasted five minutes in an episode of The Twilight Zone, and I'm like, this is awful horrifying <laughs> oh, no. well, i have to admit I, I do have cbs for a couple things um, um i'm not the biggest fan of it but Teresa loves the show the good fight oh yeah that's pot it's she very popular that. um i kind of like a show called the unicorn i'm not crazy about it but i'll watch it if, you know it's kind of just it's i think it's very uh it's got problems but i really like the actors on it but um well, let me. I, I got it also, and I I stopped watching this. But I've watched the soap opera since I was a kid. I started watching with my great aunt and uh, uh, Alta May, uh, Bold and the Beautiful. So I get CBS so I can just catch up on Bold and the Beautiful every now and then. Yeah, it's funny because I I grew up watching General Hospital. Mm -hmm. and, uh, One of my guilty my pleasures. Life. Yeah, no, I, I yeah, soaps were and soaps are fun to work on too. But back to. Uh, uh, the Unicorn, so that gave me a chance to talk about really like one of my top shows. I kind of glazed over it quickly is Justified. I love Justified. I want to I want to watch that. That show is like uh, it just you know Timothy Oliphant. Honestly, I know this is going to be hyperbole yeah. probably, but he's as cool as Jim Rockford yeah. on that show. And but anyways, Walton Goggins is fantastic on that show, and so. We watched The Unicorn, too, because Lily's a big fan of, of Goggins. And so I was like, okay, I'll watch this silly sitcom. And yeah, it's not That's great. That's what I watch, too. But we watch it because it's, you know, it's fine. The cast is pretty good. It's, it's okay to watch. Uh, but I get it. I totally get it. But Goggins is, is uh, he's one of our favorites. Oh, that, that reminds me, too. Not that he has a big part of it. Another great show is The Righteous Gemstones. Have you guys watched that? Oh, yeah. Yeah, so order up your HBO. Call your never mind. Yeah. Call your, yeah, your cable operator and order up that HBO. Have you guys watched uh, Atlanta? Yes, no. first season. I haven't seen second yet. Second season is even better. Oh, cool. I, and it's on Hulu, and I have Hulu. Yeah, watch the second season. Okay. I'm gonna watch Atlanta. Crazy good. Yeah. Cool. Can I make another quick suggestion? You yes. can make as many as you like. Um, Jendi Tartofsky. Um, who um, did Samurai Jack, uh, has a new show on uh, Adult Swim. You can watch it on the Adult Swim app, I think, for free. But it's called Primal. And it's uh, scientifically ridiculous. But it's about a, a caveman and a dinosaur becoming friends <laughs> and fighting monsters. Um, it's kind of like um, 
I, only you guys will get, only people our age will get this reference, but it feels like, do you remember uh, the Herculoids? No. No. Uh, do you remember uh, like those kind of Hanna-Barbera action cartoons? Of oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, like Space Ghost, things like yeah. that? Yeah, yeah. Okay, it's like that, except beautifully animated and incredibly violent. Oh. Um, it's really not for kids, like, at all. And But my, uh, uh, Zach, my son, just nailed it. He said, it's a, basically, it's a, it's a complete discussion about violence. It, if you watch it all the way to the end of the first season, and the second season is coming, it takes you through all these different modes of violence and what they cost you, basically. Uh, it's, wow. boy, it's... Oh, that's cool. That when, when I got the last episode, I was just... It, it's, it's really great. And Tressa loves it. She, we, we, we had to stop ourselves because there's only five episodes. So uh, and we wanted to slow it down so we could like, really enjoy them. Incredible. I'll find that. So, yeah, I bet you my son would like that. Yeah. So I wanted to um, kind of switch gears a little bit um, since uh, the lockdown or what do you want to call it? Self in place or whatever. Um, shelter in place. Um, you know, uh, right after I bought, uh, what was it like 12 AMC passes from Costco? <laughs> <laughs> Will I ever be able to use them? Um, but, I know I have a gift card from ArcLight that's got lots of money on it still. So. Yeah. You know, my uh, uh, I trust and I were uh, belong to that AMC where we play. We pay a monthly fee. Right. Yeah. They're refunding us. Oh, well, they're, I know. They're really great about that. That's nice. I'll never get this back, and I, I don't. No big deal. But um, so there are. You can get new releases. Oh yeah, yeah. You can stream them. Um, you know, for the price of a couple. Uh, tickets, right? right. Like uh, we watched The Invisible Man the other night for twenty bucks. How was it? Uh, I liked it. I liked it. I like. We watched uh, Emma too. Yeah, that's we're gonna see that too. Um, yeah, Lou didn't like The Invisible Man. Um, no. I saw it in the theater. That was, I think, the last thing I saw in the theater before this hit. Yeah, I I don't know that guy's stuff, but I'll bet. Pat probably knows this guy's stuff. Sure. Um, but I did like it. It was different than what I expected it to be. Um, I'm trying to think of the actress's name. I really like her a lot. Elizabeth um, Moss. Yeah. Uh, awesome. Peg, or as I call her, Peggy from Mad Men. Peggy, yeah. Um, and everything else. Um, and then what else? Do we, oh, um, so you can get that through pretty much Prime, any streaming yeah. service. Um, and then we saw The Whistlers, which is, um, I don't even know what language it was, but it's um, the Gordon Center. And, and I heard that was really good. It was, you know what, <laughs> about, about a third of the way through, I looked at Heather and I was like, I don't, do you know what this is about? And she goes, I'm not, I don't know. And I said, I don't either, but I really like it. And I'm glad you don't, can't figure, you know, because we were like, what the hell? But it was so compelling. Um, and, and, you know, the end of it, okay, I get, it. I liked it a lot. And then, um, uh, we watched St. Francis, um, through the music box. Um, now you can watch either of those through the music box, uh, here in Chicago. Oh. And then, uh, the Gordon Center's in Lake Forest and they were going to show it. So they, so these theaters get a portion and they're only charging $12 for the movie, for the rental. Oh, I would watch a movie through the music box. That's a good idea. Keep yeah. that. Can you do that on your, do you have to do that on your computer or can you do it through a streaming service? I don't know. I do it. I do it through my, through my laptop. I, I VGA my laptop into, um, into my oh, screen directly. Yeah. I VGA cause you know, but I was thinking about well, the last time we did a show, there wasn't even Facebook. Yeah. yeah. I got to hook up my, my laptop to my computer. That's a good idea. I mean, to yeah. my TV. Yeah. And it's just remember, I don't want to see that. I want to support the music box. Right, with my TV, um, and you can probably do it with with uh, HDMI too. I just my my laptop doesn't have HDMI, um, but as far as sound, right. and I've, then I've got to have a separate sound, you know, the little sub miniature jack or miniature jack or whatever you call it. The um, you know what I'm talking about. This sure. little jack. I'm 
I'm a member of a thing called Cinematique, and there's two theaters out here, the Arrow and the Egyptian. So the Arrow's in Santa Monica and the Egyptian's in Hollywood. And they show, they're not quite as, I mean, it's similar to the music box. It's not quite, doesn't seem quite, it's not like as double feature heavy, I guess. But they show a lot of old stuff and get a lot of Q&As at those theaters. But I love going to those places, but I don't know how they're doing during this. Mm. They're not. Well, no, I just mean I hope they survive on the flip yeah, side. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So we've been going for a while now. Uh, I'm going to cut it off. Um, you have got, had enough. We've no, Last I call. Could, I could talk all afternoon. Uh, yeah, sure. So, and I thought that's how it would be. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to pin you guys down now. You want to do another one? Sure. Okay. It, Okay, great. Let's do another. Let's do another show, kids. Um, remember, uh, we we do have uh, a website that we rarely post on, but maybe we can start. You know, um, I'll be honest with you. I I don't have. I'm a little envious of the people that do have a lot of time in this pandemic, um, because it's actually made me a little busier. Um, and uh, so I'm looking. Oh, me too. I've, I found that. Uh that it used to be you go to work and not that I didn't do stuff at home, but you'd go to work and then you come home. Now you're at work all the time. So if something comes up, you know, or you don't leave, you know, I work longer days sitting here and then you were always kind of on call for work. So I agree with you, George. I think I'm busier now than I was before. So Pat, are you, are you teaching? Are you doing yeah. uh, video? I, we switched all our classes to online and you know, online environment and, um, I would say that's, that's been, inc it's, it's, it's been working, which I'm very happy about. My students have been working really hard, cool. uh, to make that work, but, uh, it's, it's been quite a load. I mean, it's, 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 um, to teach online, if, if you, if you want to make it worthwhile, I think it's like twice as much work as teaching face to face. So, uh, I, I've been like hammered just in yeah. terms of work yeah my wife's a teacher not to complain but I know I'm, I'm, I'm happy to have a job i'm lucky to have a job right now yeah not to complain right you know no. not to complain at all and clc's been treating us great so um um uh, not complaining great yeah, my wife's a teacher too and she's working her butt off uh keeping yeah. up with all this it's it's hard but yeah you got to do it so let's let's come back uh maybe a couple of weeks we'll come back to another show and yeah yep um, so we got a website. I'll put the URL. I think it's georgegreen.org slash media dogs. And then we've also got a Facebook group you can join. Um, I, it was originally for, it's a private group, but maybe I should open it up to anybody who, sure. might, be, who might be seeing this. Sure. Um, it was originally for people that were involved with media dogs. And maybe we could do a retrospect and talk about those drummers and the audience members and the, and the, uh, I don't know, the, and remember my uh, son Christopher. My son Christopher would sometimes do the camera. Yeah. yeah. And 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 we had um. What was the guy who wrote uh? What is it? Lips together, teeth apart. His nephew. Oh, Terrence McNally. What, what was it? was that his nephew? No, who was? Uh, I don't oh, 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 no, it was playwright's nephew. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was. Uh, oh, geez, who was that? It was somebody else. But yeah, I remember. And so, yeah, maybe we can uh, figure out some of that stuff. And I don't know, uh, but we'll be back. Uh, you Good. guys, you guys yeah. ready for the the end theme? Yep, sure. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it's the uh, song Goodman. I think. Wait, that's not it. <laughs> that is it. It's not my. I did a couple edits. It's hard to hear it in. Bye, spirit. everyone. Bye, everyone.